Hello, this work is about scaling large production clusters with partition synchronization. The scale of computer clusters has grown significantly in recent years at Alibaba. Today, a cluster may have 100,000 machines and execute billions of tasks, especially short tasks, each day. As a result, the scheduler, which manages resource utilization in a cluster, also needs to be upgraded to work at a much larger scale. In this presentation, we discuss our design of a distributed scheduling framework and the techniques we use to tackle the problems that we encountered during the upgrade of the scheduler in our production clusters. We show the workload statistics in Alibaba in a random mode. The solid line in the figure plots the number of jobs processed in a cluster, which ranges from 3.3 to 4.4 million each day. A job consists of many tasks and the dotted curve in the figure plots the number of tasks each day, which ranges from 3.1 to 4.4 billion. Most tasks are short tasks and 87% of the tasks are completed in less than 10 seconds. Our previous cluster schedule design is a monolithic single master's architecture, which could not handle the scale of the current clusters. First, the scheduler can, heavily, can be heavily loaded with heartbeat messages from numerous workers. Yet reducing the messages by increasing the gap of consecutive heartbeats can leave idle machines unused. Second, the large number of tasks simply exceeds the capability of a single scheduler. Therefore, we need a new scheduler architecture. In addition to the scalability challenge, the new scheduler should also achieve a good trade-off among various scheduling objectives. We we'll focus on four things. First, scheduling efficiency or scheduling delay. Second, scheduling quality, which means whether the resource preference of the task is satisfied. Third, fairness and priority between jobs and users and fourth, resource utilization. These objectives often contradict each other. For example, requiring high scheduling quality may prolong the scheduling delay. Maintaining strict fairness can leave resources unused and thus hurt utilization. Over the years, the complicated logic for balancing these objectives has been programmed into various scheduling strategies. In addition, other cluster components, such as application masters and worker agents, have taken years collaborative efforts from different teams in Alibaba to become robust. Thus, the new scheduler design should make as few changes to the existing code base as possible to ensure the entire system's robustness and backward compatibility. Finally, the system upgrades should be transparent to both the internal users and cloud clients of Alibaba. We we'll start by investigating existing scheduled architectures and found that Omega can be a potential solution. Omega proposed a shared state architecture. In Omega, a master maintains the cluster state, which indicates the availability of resources in each machine in the cluster. There are multiple schedulers each of which maintains a local copy of the cluster state by synchronizing with the master copy periodically. Since a worker slot may be assigned by different schedulers to different tasks concurrently, conflicts may happen, where only one task gets the slot and other tasks need to be rescheduled. Omega's shared state architecture can better achieve our objectives and constraints than other previous scheduler architectures. First, each scheduler can run different scheduling strategies programmed in separate code bases for different types of jobs. Second, each scheduler has a global view of the cluster. This allows global policies, for example, fairness and priority to be implemented. Third, each scheduler can assign tasks to any machine in the cluster instead of a fixed subset of the partitions. These characteristics allow us to keep all the existing scheduling algorithms and make few changes within the scheduler architecture. 
Omega assumes that there is no synchronization overhead, and thus each scheduler synchronizes the entire local state with the master whenever it commits a task to the master. However, in our production system, we need to maintain a gap between consecutive synchronizations as our scheduler can be overloaded with network communication. One reason is that it has to maintain frequent communication with application masters. Many worker machines in different racks and a massive number of front end requests. Another reason is that the size of the states that our scheduling algorithms rely on is large. Therefore, we cannot synchronize the state every time we assign a task to a slot. This implies that the local state on each scheduler can be staler and conflicts happen more often, which impacts the benefit of using multiple schedulers. We try to model the conflicts by the number of idle slots, number of schedulers, and the number of tasks waiting to be scheduled. The detailed derivations and equations can be found in the paper. However, even under simplified scenarios, it is still hard to derive a mathematical solution. The equation is complicated and it is hard to factor in the impact from repetitive rescheduling since it is a dynamic situation. Therefore, we continue our analysis by a lightweight simulation. The lightweight simulation simulates a cluster with n schedulers and s slots. We can vary the task submission rate r, synchronization gap g, and the quality of the slots b. The quality of slots is used to simulate some hotspots in the cluster. For example, certain hardware or data locations on particular machines are more wanted than other ones. A slot with higher quality has a higher probability of being chosen during scheduling. In particular, one extreme case that puts schedulers on the test is when the task submission rate and the resource needs of the tasks just match with the total amount of resources in a cluster. Suppose in an ideal setting without any conflict, we need end schedulers to achieve zero scheduling delay. But since conflicts happen, the distributed scheduling can never keep up with the submission rate without introducing more schedulers or extra slots or both to increase the scheduling capacity and reduce the conflict rate. Therefore, this extreme case helps us to see how much overhead is incurred due to conflicts, which is reflected by the extra schedulers and extra slots needed for maintaining the same scheduling delay. As we can see in these figures, higher submission rate, larger synchronization gap, and the quality score distribution with more variance or lead to more overhead, namely more schedulers and more extra slots. Each line in the figures shows a trade-off between using extra schedulers and using extra slots to maintain the same scheduling latency in a specific setting. Each data point means that if we have A times N schedulers, instead of just N, we need to introduce S extra more slots. Adding many extra slots and schedulers is a big price to pay for a large scale production cluster, considering both the extra machine cost and daily operation cost. Thus, we want to look for a better solution. Based on the simulation results, task mention rate, Slot scores and synchronization gap are the main factors that contribute to conflicts. We cannot change task submission rate as it is determined by the workloads. Our solution focuses on the last two factors, namely slot quality and staleness of the local states. We found that scheduling delay increases disproportionately within the gap G. When the cluster state is just synchronized, it is fresher and scheduling has fewer conflicts. But when the state becomes more outdated towards the end of a gap G, scheduling delay decisions result in more conflicts. Conflicts lead to rescheduling, which may in turn result in new conflicts, and hence rescheduling recursively. We observe that most of the delay is disproportionately caused 
by the stellar view of the cluster state in the later interval of the FG. Based on the observation, we design parsing. Parsing logically partitions the master state into P parts, where P is no less than N. Each scheduler still keeps a local cluster state, but different schedulers synchronize different partitions of the state each time, in contrast to synchronizing the entire state. For example, we have four schedulers and eight partitions. At the beginning, scheduler one synchronize the states of partition one and two with the master. Scheduler two synchronizes the state of partitions three and four, and so on. Then the subsequent runs of synchronization continue in a round robin manner. Thus, in each run, all schedulers synchronize different partitions of the cluster state. In essence, each scheduler synchronizes the state in final granularity more frequently. As we can see in the figures, compared with the old approach, the number of extra schedulers and extra slots we require decreases significantly. The diff sync and same sync refers to the strategy that each scheduler synchronizes different partitions or the same partition at the same time. We can see diff sync outperforms same sync. This is because of two reasons. First, schedulers tend to pick slots from the fresher partitions as slots in the older partitions are more likely to be occupied. Second, when same sync is used, all schedulers are competing for available slots from the same fresher partitions. One thing made possible by using the diff sync strategy is that we can balance the trade-off between scheduling quality and scheduling efficiency. A scheduler schedules a task by first choosing the partition with the highest average slot score and then picking available slots by weighted sampling based on slot scores. We call this quality first strategy. When latency first strategy is used, each scheduler schedules a task by first trying to pick slots from fresher partitions. An adaptive scheduling strategy is to use quality first when scheduling delay is small and to use latency first when the scheduling delay is high. The figures show that in high fidelity simulation with real production workloads, the difference among the four strategies is clear. The y-axis of the second figure denotes how many percentages of the task can get the most preferred resources it requests. In summary, quality first and latency first do not always outperform each other, and an adaptive strategy can follow closely with the best one in various situations. We also have a detailed comparison of scheduling throughput, scheduling delay, the number of conflicts and the scheduling quality on all the strategies we have mentioned in the high fidelity simulation in the paper. To summarize, parsing increases the scheduling capability of our production cluster to 40,000 40, tasks per second on 100,000 machines. It reduces conflicts in contending resources to achieve low scheduling delay and high scheduling quality. It also allows us to maintain user transparency and backward compatibility that are essential to our production clusters. Thank you.